No. No. Up. Up. Not down. Not here. She's not here. No one's here. Go up. Back up to the clouds. Back up to Anele. But it's cold, colder than here. She'll need the shawl. My mother made it. From white spit and silver hair and ivory years. I must go back up to the clouds. Back up to my people. Don't tell me what to do. Take your hand off my arm. Yes, I have a passport. I don't know. In my bag. I... I... I don't know my name. You heard me. I don't know which flight. I can't remember. I don't know where from. You tell me. No, I have no family in England. I told you. In my bag. I told you. In my bag. No, I'm not on holiday. No, I've no one meeting me. No, I'm not staying with friends. I don't know yet. Does it matter? Does it matter? England is a rectangle. Above my head, out of the corner of my eye, a small grey rectangle of sky. The days have congealed into a grey viscous lump, into a week. And then there are the questions. You still claim not to know which organisation the soldiers came from, specifically. No. They were soldiers, were they? Yes. I don't know. They wore uniforms. Yes. Partly. Partly. Yes. Partly. You're sure they weren't neighbours, for instance? <laughs> they were not neighbours. They were not known to you personally. They were not known to me personally. There is no record of you having worked as a journalist on the paper you mentioned. I worked for eight and a half months, three days a week. Perhaps you've given us the wrong dates. I've given you the right dates. And you say it is as a direct consequence of articles written by you that the atrocity was committed. That and other things. What other things? I've told you. Look at my statements, look at your files, you'll see my words. Fucking words. Fucking words. Where did you get your papers? I can't tell you that. You realise you've committed an offence entering the country with a false passport? Yes. A serious offence. I was in fear of my life. So far, we can find no evidence to substantiate that claim. <laughs> That's a nice dress you're wearing. Is it? You have American makeup in your bag. And 500 pounds. My friends gave it to me. Yes, my friends. It says here you have a sister studying fashion drawing in London. Perhaps you came over to see her. Have a holiday. Do a bit of seasonal shopping. See the sights. And then stay on. Just a few weeks or a few months. She never made it to England, my sister. Because she's dead. You fucking fish waste English cunts! She's dead! I am taken to another square room with a high window. Two men in short white coats restrain me, one pulling my badly mended broken arm, rough as shit. Well, you shouldn't be such a silly girl. The other sticks his needle in me. They can't make me sleep.
In bed, I watch the small gray rectangle of England, the veins of English cloud, and weep. I pace, pick up a magazine or two, flip through. The very page, the very frock, bright blood red, my sister Abbo drew and colored in. The very line she smudged with a small wet finger. I can hear her laugh. I was spoken to in my country at passport control and spoke back exactly as rehearsed, my voice as thin and sharp as an actress. At the airport in the mirror and with a start, I caught sight of the small painted girl with staring eyes who is playing me. Yes, a holiday, two or three weeks. My husband's up to his eyes in work. Do a bit of shopping? See the sights. No family as such. But friends. Of friends. Of friends. Up the ramp. I feel my ancestors' hot breath on my face. Hear their hearts pump and all the old songs. The plane has a voice too. It whispers to me and holds me tight, too tight. I first saw my husband in bright sunlight throw a chuckling tot at the air so high that for a split second the baby seemed to float or fly. <laughs> my mother said she fell for my father one carnival night under a sliced moon when he bandaged her foot after kissing each toe. At the point of death, the sharp blue point, my grandmother cradled my grandfather, crooning before letting go, she said, of all the years and watching them float up like a child's balloon. Cloud minutes are centuries that suddenly part and through a hole in the sky, the bird dead fly. Our ancestors, my grandmother's grandfather's people, spirits tapping at the window with their strong beaks and calling, Anele, Anele. I am going on the plane to Anele and Yemi and Abu and mother and father. And Anneli, with blue black eyes, smiles and reaches out to me with one small brown dimpled hand. Yes, I'm a vegetarian, thank you. No, I'm quite all right, just a bit hot, thank you. Yes, I've flown before. Something to take my mind? Thank you, thank you. A magazine in English. Tall white women in chainmail dresses and flag faces, red, white, and blue. England's turning the pages, Yemi told me. Turned on its head. England spins on the other side of the clouds, holding out its one good hand, an old hand. Holding out its one good hand to me. Campsfield Detention Center. A tangled tower of 20 foot high razor wire secretly coils all the way from Oxford. Where am I? How long will I be here? What happens next? What happens now? Shut up, little nigger woman. Group four, prison for profit. Warden's ex army hired to brutalize in 12 hour shifts at four pounds an hour. Don't catch his eye, girl. He's in a mood today. Spilled his coffee down his bed shed, see? 
What are you whispering about? I, I need a change of clothes. Yeah, and I need a new pair of wolves, darling. Is it possible to go into the field today? No. Why? Drainage problems. Still, drainage problems. Can I have the key to the library? No. How do I complain? <laughs> you don't complain and they transfer you to another jail without appeal. Ban visitors, intercept your calls, lose your files, send you back. I'm telling you, girl, keep your head down and your fat nose out. A boy arrives, perhaps 16, a child man, with troubled eyes and shaking hands. Take your thumb out of your cake, old son. The boy moans, his soft mouth bubbling groans. The flame in his eyes lights the blue touch paper of my mother's hat. Don't cry. Let me hold you. There, little brother. See? You're safe. You're safe with me. Hey, snooty cats, mix off. Back off, do you hear me? Stand out my back! There's no room for social interaction with that saw in here. Turn a blind, and we'd have enough little black monkeys in a blanket to sink all Kidlington. For the first time, I hear the child man speak. Excuse me, sir. Yeah? I request a full medical examination and for my file to be put on record. Request refused. For me, however, would you mind undressing down to brown and pants, please, behind the screen? Yes, thank you. Did you hear me? Yes, I would mind. I was given a complete physical examination shortly after arriving at Heathrow. Another four weeks later. Another 14 days ago. I found the last doctor's questions invasive and upsetting. His manner rude and brusque. There was no third party present. Back. In your country. You're raped, it says. That's right. This is new information to us. Is it? It must have occurred to you you might be pregnant. I am not pregnant! I see. I miscarried early. But it says in your notes you had a baby, not miscarried. I had a baby, then miscarried. I was raped the day after giving birth to my husband's child. Really? And you got pregnant? Yes, I got pregnant, then miscarried. God has been good to me, not your God. You must eat. My husband's friend a day after what happened. Ice cream, a small spoonful, see it won't hurt your mouth. A drink, you must drink. Green tea, hot and sweet and bucky. Remember our last party sitting on the terrace? I slipped and tripped and smashed the blue teapot. Can you remember? Tragedy has opened up a chasm between us. Nobody dare look anybody in the eye. The music of pain is silence and shame. I can't remember hearing the ticking of a clock in their warm kitchen before. I am taken to a back door in the city, down a thousand stone cold steps to a warm damp hall. There's already a blanket there, and a bucket smells of shit, and someone's hat. A newspaper, a newspaper, on every yellow page, letters small and faint, strangely unfamiliar and sly, E's and P's and I's make words, fucking words, fucking shh, 
you mustn't make a sound. You put our friends at risk. Not a cough, not a sigh. I'm sorry it's such a terrible place. I'll try and come every day with food. Try and sleep. I dream. I am suckling an old grey grinning bull with a gold tooth and diamond stud. And I feel myself drain slowly away. It is not an unpleasant dream. Awake on the third day, my milk comes through. My breast bite I burn up. As directed, I express it to the shit bucket. First the lactose, then the warm, white, watery milk, taking each breast in two hands and pumping. One night, mad with waking dreams, I suck on my own breast, hoping to taste anile and my old sweet life. I taste death, too warm and sweet, and I vomit. In the fourth week, alone, still, after a particularly long bout of painful cramp, sitting up from the bucket, I see a tiny fetus grinning in the puke and piss. I cover it with a newspaper, with the grinning yellowy words, and turn away. I can tell Ghanaian right, from a Gambian, a Kenyan from an Algerian, a Somali from an Angolan at 20, 30, 40 feet at least. Chatty Karen, one of the group four lady guards boasts of her observational expertise. Not by the boat race, that's a hopeless case, but by the bum. You mark my words. The nearer the equator that you get, the higher rise the buttocks by and large. Hit the Congo and you can eat your breakfast of the bastards fat back sides. Huh? Now, Iraqis, quite different to Pakis. 200 souls, did I tell you? Broken or breaking in Campsfield, England. Hey, lazy puss. Hey, do you hear me? An older woman with a perforated eardrum and three fingers missing, told to get up off her fat ass, spits, and is made to clean the toilets. Excuse me. The child man, still afraid of shadows after three sleepless nights, complains politely about the noise coming from the group for rec room again and discovers the next morning his phone card magically mislaid. As for me, I still wear the same clothes. Good morning again. I have a legal representative now, Mr. Pennington, trying to be cheerful, hard pressed with troubles of his own. You're looking well. My eyes are yellow and my skin is gray. Goodness, more notes for me. He's smart in a good gray suit, but a button's missing from his left shirt cuff. His wife has cancer. He coughs and Charlie from his wallet takes a snap of a large boned lady in a pretty hat, weeding in an English country garden, smiling and sensible. They met at university. The chemo is knocking her for six, poor Pat, but she expects to make a full recovery. A full recovery. As for me, the problem stays the same. We can't convince anyone your life's in danger. I've got the letter from your brother here. My brother wrote to the British government, telling them if I returned, on my arrival I would almost certainly be taken away for questioning and incarcerated before being shot or worse. That's all very well and it's all good stuff. But to be honest, it won't cut mustard with the powers that be. Anyone could have written it. And again, there's still the big problem, and I'm sorry to tell you after all this. The newspaper, 
still refuses to verify your claim that you work there as a journalist for eight and a half months, three days a week. I snatch his paper, shuffle through that stem. It's the wrong newspaper. Of course. The difference in the title is one word. One dangerous word. Despite being most careful in my instructions, all these months the British authorities have been writing to the wrong fucking paper. What do you think? I auditioned for the latest Broadway hit, Escape, and Make It Big? Not quite. The agent comes through the warm hole in the dead of night. He brings false papers at a price. He smiles but stands well back, the lights jump in my hair. My lips infected. I lick the yellow ooze. I'm hungry now. Is it a miracle? You'll have to fix her up. She stinks. And then, a coat, a dress and shoes. You'll have to cut your hair. And Naomi Campbell said it short, that's the trend. Remind me to bring scissors when we come back. We don't want the other passengers to complain. You'll have to smile. A bit of blusher won't hit. My wife's got some old makeup somewhere. American. Mascara, lipstick, shadow gloss, I'll hunt it out. You're a pretty girl. Cheer up! We'll do you up like one of the top models. The asylum division is not satisfied that the applicant qualifies as a refugee under Article 1 of the 1951 UN Convention. I am now left to persuade them that there are humane or compassionate reasons why I should be allowed to remain in England. On March the 1st, 1997, I gave birth to a baby girl. And it was a happy day. I am a poet. Why do you smile? And I would like one day to write a history of my people, of my grandmother and her grandfather, the witch doctor, whose strong magic made a hole in the sky for the bird dead to fly back to the living. And the living dead's cries ever jealous made the earth rumble and shake and uproot every mamba tree as far as the eye can see, which is a very long way in my grandmother's grandfather's eyes. Stick to the facts. You're right, the old tales distract. May I have a glass of water, please? <coughs> don't, don't expect times, dates, places or names. My husband's family are still there and my two brothers. Wolf is. May I have a glass of water, please? I will tell you my story. Some bits you won't believe. Here and there, a day, a week goes missing. Sometimes the pictures shiver and the voices shriek in my head. Sometimes they shred. Of course. Simply. Thank you. Forget I'm black, by the way. I could be pink or puce, or grey. English tap water smells like piss, don't they complain the English? As I say, March the 1st, 1997 was a happy day. For three whole weeks, my husband was home from university. He has his grandmother's grandfather's eyes in a big lump. He had my mother, father, and younger sister, Abu, stayed home to see me through the birth of my first child. My mother was a housewife. She cooked and cleaned. She loved to sing rock and roll. You understand? She was clever with her hands. She had crocheted a white wool shawl threaded with lace ribbon. My father worked for the water board. My younger sister worked in a shop waiting to go to a London art college to study fashion drawing. She was a talented artist, my sister. 
as I say, I am a poet. But to make ends meet while my husband studied, I worked as a journalist for eight and a half months, three days a week. On February the 9th, I received a note posted to the office where I worked. It wasn't signed. I wasn't scared. Journalists who wrote on issues concerning human rights routinely received threats. But words are bullets. And from me, one day, perhaps, a killer spray. A killer spray. As I say, March the 1st, 1997, was a happy day. This is what happened on March the 2nd. Bitch cut, you bitch cut, you bitch cut! Soldiers were there. My sister at the table with a copy of last month's Vogue from the shop. She is drawing the Caesars dresses, carrying them in with a kid's pencil crayon set, red pin the ears black. Just before they kicked in the door and shut off her face because they hadn't liked the words I'd written, she smudged one line with a small red finger, excited at getting it exactly right. No, no, not her! Me, me, me! Get back! Stay back! Get under! Keep under! My husband in front of me stopped the bullets for a while, then died, I think, without a sound. Ah! Ah! He was a son to her. Smaller than hers, and sweeter tempered, but a son. Yeah, 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 yeah! My father springs, he speaks in tongues, his madness makes them stop, and for just a half second of a second, their jaws drop. Strong magic has made him three men's height and strength. Then they plunge their bayonets in him, without hate it seems, the swift jabs and light steps, as delicate and dainty as a dance. The tall one's bayonet pieces the nylonium, sticks in and breaks. He curses. You fucking are my gun, now look what you've done. Pulling it out of my father's neck, he tries to fix it back on his rifle. He can't. He seems put out. A single bullet through one eye stops the horror from my mother. My baby, my baby, please, please, my baby. The tall one, whose bayonet is broken, takes his machete from his side. He grins. He has a gold tooth and diamond stud and shouts and slumbers like an old bull. They watch! They watch! My baby. My baby. My baby. Adele. One day and a million years old, the bed dead will come down through a hole in the sky and carry your small spirit back up to the clouds, back up to our people. And the living dead, ever jealous, will make the earth rumble and shake, and that will root every mother tree as far as the eye can see, which is a very long way. My grandmothers, grandfathers, ah, I, please kill me. So you want to die? No. I want to be free and live. I am on hunger strike. I am waiting for the result of my appeal. I am waiting to receive exceptional leave to remain. To be free of fear for myself. I will never lose the fear for my friends or the pain. Do you know anything about force feeding? No. It's a fairly horrid business. A small tube is forced down the patient's throat, sometimes the nose. Sometimes the patient can be sedated, but not always. The whole business is extremely undignified, unpleasant and uncomfortable for everyone. You don't believe me? I believe anything.
John Radcliffe Hospital, Headington. I weigh six and a half stone. A multi gym with stamp treads and overheads, a pool, library, cafeteria, and a snooker room. Ping pong. It's all wrong if you ask me. I mean, they run these detention centers like 18 to 30 clubs. Watch it, you'll give a blanket burn, you dozy bitch. Then there's you and me, Elaine, saving up our coppers for a couple of weeks back end in Spain. Her tongue's all swollen. Look, poor cow. You think somehow admissions might have mentioned this, made a note somewhere. They're putting a tube down there tomorrow. What I don't understand. If it is so bad and they want to die, why don't they just go back to their own country? Shh, she's still hearing you. I reckon they should send her packing too. There, you're done, you naughty girl. I went to bed. Next time, press the button C. It's not too hard to remember, eh? We can't be changing sheets every two minutes for you when there's real sick people to see too. Mr. Pennington, my solicitor utterly transformed in a crumpled pink and green Hawaiian shit. Young lady, goodness me, I had no idea. I last saw him four and a half weeks ago. He dazzles. The shirt is dreadful, isn't it? It's the last clean something in the drawer. Dear, dear. Seeing you is so distressing. I knew, of course, about your fast. A bit of good news at last. The result of my appeal? The names you gave have come up trumps. One of the British journalists on assignment in 96 got back to me and is prepared to substantiate your story. My story? That articles written by you in the political climate of the time would have been interpreted as highly inflammatory. Of course, I start to cry. I don't want to get your hopes too high, but I'll try and get us in front of the special adjudicator, ASAP. Fat tears splash onto the sharp white shroud they dress me up in. Dear girl, we can't have this. And you must eat now, right away. I'll call a nurse. You'll need your strength for all that lies ahead. I thank Mr. Pennington for the 142 letters he has written so far on my behalf. Four and a half hours of phone calls. I politely inquire after his good wife. She died, my dear. At 2 a.m. last night, she died. Field. I eat a perfect yellow plum. It would bruise to my thumb. The miraculous juice drips sticky and sweet. My first solid food in 28 days. I wipe my hands and take a sheet of creamy paper and I write, slow and shaking to the hospital administrator. Complaining of the remarks made by two nurses believing me to be asleep. The words so long locked up are dry and hard like shriveled nuts. I roll them between thumb and forefinger in the warm, damp palms of my hands. Right! Now look here, you! The Gambian. This is his fourth complaint about the food. We have had it confirmed that the beef burgers served of late on Friday and Monday last were all went out of date, which consequently would explain the spate of recent gastronomic illnesses, stomach pain, vomiting amongst inmates. I therefore request this be no, brought to that no, no, do you hear me? No. August 20th, 1997. Dawn breaks like glass.
Come on, wakey, wakey, rise and shake your on your belly about the serious clink. Following his complaint about the food the day before, the Gambian has been bumped out, forcibly removed to Winston Green or Rochester or Reading Jail on some trumped up charge. Ill discipline or lack of cooperation or simply, usually, too much fat lip. If proved, these accusations bring instant deportation. Not my leg. No, not my leg. Not my. They're strangling him. You're strangling him, Seaman. They're killing him. You're killing him. He's gonna die. He's gonna die. The boy sucks at the air to try to make screams. He's turning blue. I tell you, he's turning. He's turning. He panics, lashing out. Temper, temper! They pin him to the ground, his chin an inch from their feet. Don't piss about or we'll make burgers out of you, black meat. Reinforcements arrive. Grinning. Too many men for one small struggling boy. The scuffle shifts the dust. Onlookers gather and stamp and rumble. Words get spat. You bullies! What if that was your son? Then... A frustrated guard with a kind of slow motion viciousness raises his baton and someone falls. Come on, not that way. Here. Wait a minute. Get your breath back. Wait. Christ, I can smell smoke. No! It's just the signs for the breakout, and that's all. Look! See, go for guns with sticks, smashing the boat, smashing, smashing. What are you doing? <laughs> We're helping you, that's all. Christ. Not that way, girl. There's still the building. There's no way through. Out into the library. Out. Behind the wire. Desperation, which makes people mad, now makes torches. Help, please. We're locked in. The guns look the same. And the smoke. God help us! We'll have to break the doors down. And again! And again! Come on, come on. Out, out, out into the courtyard! Fifty brothers and sisters spill suddenly dangerous into the mean sunshine. Their air smelling like freedom. Some will lose their voices at the injustice of it. An old man kicks down a wooden door, finding pots and paints. Prisoners of conscience waving the placards at the cameras. I had a wife and a son. I was a good father and a hard worker. I am not a criminal. Please leave the courtyard. I repeat, leave the courtyard. Marksman, on the Land Rovers, pointing rifles at us. You are a serious breach of the law. Smoke curls up to the clouds. You are surrounded and outnumbered. Your protest is futile. I repeat, your protest. Smoke curls up to the English clouds in thin, grey, lonely wisps. And I hear someone say, they'll have to do something now, won't they? men and women, old and young, were kept securely in the visitor center, where we slept on the floor like dogs. What do you mean participating in the affray? I saw no participating, just frightened people trying to run away. I dispute that totally. In no way could the protest be said to be premeditated. In no way. Why have you locked the doors? You ask too many questions, girl. You have no right to lock our doors. My file's missing. My personal case notes, a blue lever art file four inches thick, looted in the riot by your pals. No, no, why take my notes and leave my bag and cash? You ask too many. I wish to go to the toilet. You'll wait. What? You'll wait, you'll fucking wait. Pardon? Right, you've got 30 seconds. That's time for knickers down your business and wipe knickers up. I'm counting, leave the door ajar. This can't be happening in England, August 1997. 
I wish to speak to my solicitor. Visitors from lawyers are not permitted. That is a fundamental breach of human rights. Is it? I wish to phone my lawyer. No incoming or outgoing calls are possible. What? Your pal smashed all the phones. I am writing this down. I am keeping a record. I am writing this down. I am keeping a record. I am writing this down. I am keeping... The daily body search. Another new rule since the protest. Afterwards, we feel dirty. Stripped off and in my first shower for two weeks. The guard, a peep tom, almost loses his skin when I. Go! 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 Mr. Pennington is taking notes. I am covered in small scratches and pinched bruises. I have lost two or three clumps of hair. Blood vessels have burst in my left eye. The white is now red and it winks on its own like a cheery demon. But your injuries are self-inflicted, yes? Shame is like a fire. In the shower, I tore at my own flesh, pulling at my cheek to rip skin from bone, clawing my own breast, banging my skull against the cracked tiles. The guard denies spying on you in the shower. He was, he says, simply on duty in the corridor adjoined. The authorities insist his rapid intervention saved you from more serious self-harm. Are you all right, my dear? I've made a note of your complaints. I'll draft a, later, a letter later on today. If, as seems possible, human rights have been violated since the protest, we'll take this matter on from there. However, I will admit my fears in pursuing a higher profile for yourself just now. He has a cleaning lady now, Rina, a Filipini, who sews on all his buttons and puts knife creases in his pants. This new Labour government are looking for scalps to hang on the home office belt. While we wait for the result of your appeal, my advice to you, young lady, is to live a quiet life. removed to Tinsley House, a detention center for asylum seekers near Gatwick, run by the American company Wackenhut, their ethos famously non-confrontational. La licitio, liciti, tili, tili, tili. Thank you. That was beautiful. I'm sure, like myself, everyone here feels that you were singing not just for yourself, but for dispossessed people everywhere. Tinsley's like a modern hotel, except each room looks in on others like itself. And Elsie, the drop scones were delicious. As always, only in the visitor's room can you see the world, the sky and the plains and the busy main road. My friends were paying my legal fees. The money has now run out. The surprising Mr. Pennington acts for me, altruistically. My, you is lucky girl. Most of the suits charge a tenner for the spit on her stamp. Mary, my roommate is a Pentecostal Christian. 
She came over for her cousin's wedding, met a man, fell in love and just didn't go home. No one and nothing for me then. She has a nine month baby. See, another card from the church wishing me well. God is good. I've nothing against him, you understand, but her God is not mine. The days are like snails. Sundays are the slowest. About midday, time stops altogether with a thud. Screws tighten in my skull. My palms itch, my fingers prickle, and my legs jiggle so that I have to keep stamping my feet. My mind's on elastic then, stretching all the way home. And I smell Sunday, sweet potatoes, onion bread, and then burning, and then only smoke. Apart from a brief appearance in a Wednesday afternoon stand and show, attempts at social interaction now are nil. She stays in her room looking at the four walls all day. She's highly intelligent, ferociously articulate, manipulative in her answers, and <laughs> has a lot of anger. To grant her temporary admission on the grounds of sickness, mental or physical, would, I believe, open the floodgates to her many fellows, most of whom might be said to be suffering from depression, claustrophobia, skin disorders, and the rest. Absconding is, in my opinion, a real risk. I have prescribed paracetamol for the headache and antifungal for the hands. My advice to you is to refuse temporary admission on medical grounds, and my advice to her is to join one of your many clubs. The food is good. You have access to books, newspapers, writing materials and so on. The exercise classes are excellent, I believe. And the people are kind here, yes? The guards? Yes. They are kind. Mr. Pennington has reinvented himself in a smart jade shirt and matching tie. He takes a deep breath. I am very sorry indeed to have to tell you your appeal has unfortunately been dismissed by the special adjudicator. However, overhead a plane smothers his words and I see myself in the clouds flying home. So the next step is to take the case forward to a special appeal tribunal. Make no mistake, we've a few tricks up our sleeve before we throw in the towel, roll over and don't die. <laughs> we laugh. Why not? Now, on a less urgent matter, I've received a reply to your complaints regarding your treatment after the protest. I hardly listen. We were never denied access to lawyers, a misunderstanding it seems. Not locked in, but confined. The meagre portions of food, not deliberate policy, but stuff, vindictiveness, disciplined and sorted. Toilet paper was never rationed. Showers timed. Body searches are an essential security measure. There has never been any verbal racist abuse or sexual harassment of female detainees. I don't believe a word they say. But in the face of blunt denial supported from the very top that is the Home Office, it'll be hard to make your charges stick, if not impossible. I'm sorry. Thanks. Anyway. And there is more news you'll find upsetting, I'm sure. On the 14th November, nine black men, including my friend, the child man, were charged with violent disorder and riot following the Campsville protest. Against Mr. Pennington's advice, I am writing to my young friend, who is in Reading Young Offenders Institute, to volunteer myself as a possible defense witness for him and others. I have kick-started time again. The ferocious days dance now. Derek will bring Larrington on Christmas Eve and will open all his presents here together. She is making miles of paper chains, enough to reach Jamaica and back. We'll make the visitor's room as pretty as we can. 
She licks and coils and sticks, the chains fall in heavy loops round her black bare feet. Gars, he's too small to doubt him. But Derek says he would love to sing. Waves his little fists and coos, Derek says. Then out of a box she takes the baby shawl. See this fan thing? One of the old ladies I clean for made it for my baby boy. <laughs> the kindness of folks shines out at Christmas. Shines out. You are right, darling? You are right? Yes. I'm all right. And then they shot your father, is it? No, no, my husband. With a single shot? No, they were spraying bullets everywhere by then. Really? And yet you yourself escaped all those bullets. I was lower down on the daybed. I don't think they'd seen me then. And my husband acted as a shield. Yes, thank you. Now, they killed your father with a bayonet. Am I right? Yes. Extraordinary. Why take the trouble of suddenly bayoneting someone when you're in the middle of spraying bullets from your rifle? They had stopped shooting. Really? Yes. And had the men seen you yet? I... Yes? I don't know. Well, was it a very large room you were in? No, not very large. It was morning. Presumably there was light. Yes. So why hadn't they seen you? I was partially hidden behind a curtain. A curtain? Why didn't you mention this before? I forgot. I didn't think it was important. So, they suddenly decided to stop shooting and bayonet your father. He screamed, don't you see, and sprang at them. He surprised them. An unarmed elderly man surprised three strapping youths. He shocked them so they stopped shooting. Where did they bayonet your father? On what part of the body? Every part. And then they calmly decided to put their bayonets away and shoot your mother. Yes. And then stop shooting again and bayonet your baby daughter. Perhaps you'd like to take a sip of water. My baby wasn't killed with bayonets. The tall one couldn't get his bayonet out of my father's neck. He killed my baby with his machete. Now I'm confused. Because it says in your notes you gave birth to a baby a few weeks later. I was raped by the soldiers. I miscarried a fetus in a bucket while hiding. Ah, oh, yes. Are you quite sure of this? I'm no doctor and we probably need expert advice. But isn't it highly unlikely that you conceived the day after giving birth? Is it possible? I, or is it in fact a medical impossibility? I, you still insist you saw this grinning fetus in a bucket? I... Yes. No. Well, did you or didn't you? I... Perhaps I, I would suggest you are lying. I, I would suggest you are lying. I, I would suggest that your whole story, the killing of your family, the rape, is nothing but a pack of well-schemed lies. I am not lying! Right. Well, can we now clarify when they actually did see you for the first time in the room? I don't think it was until my mother was shot. And you, and yet you presumably hadn't stayed silent all this time, or had you? No, no, I don't know. No, I had been screaming. So why did they see you and shoot you if, as you claim, they had come for you? I don't know why they didn't. Did all four men rape you? 
three, there were three men. Did they all rape you? Yes. And you received injuries in this attack? They were a cut lip, two black eyes, a broken arm, and yes, you mentioned other injuries. You mentioned bruising and lacerations to the anus and vagina. Yet, when you arrived in England, you showed injuries consistent with a barroom brawl, no more. I had been hiding in my country for three, no, four weeks. What is it? Three or four? I, why did they rape you and not kill you? You see, sadly, we've seen and heard it all over the years in these proceedings. Generally, it is reported a woman in the situation you describe from the area you claim to come from would more likely be raped than killed. I don't know why they didn't. Or they leave their victims mutilated. I don't know. I and yet, at Heathrow, you did not, I repeat, not claim asylum. In fact, you did not seek asylum for a week. I was ill. I was confused. I was. I was. I was. I was. I was. I was. I was, I was, I was, I was. You just tell the truth, darling. See, that's God's shield that blocks their poison spears. And look at it this way. They're just doing their job. that a plastic bin liner. What? Would you like us to help you, dear? Help? I brought you coffee, two sugars cream, that's right, isn't it? And a round of toast. Oh, thank you. No, put something warmer on for now. It's bitter cold outside. What's happening? Where is she going? Seven weeks ago, Mary received her removal papers. She will be taken to the airport, then put on a plane. This is ridiculous. You can't deport her. She has a nine-month baby, a husband, and a home. Dawn is streaking a dirty gold. It's all right, dear. Don't fret. It's all right. Help me, Pag. Help me. I press the anger down. My feet are lead. We put photos into the suitcase, clothes into the black bin liner. No. Not this show. I was keeping it, see, to hold Larrington when we were all back together. A real family again. But no, give me Derek, will you? Will you? Here, yeah, let me, dear. Let me do that for you. Oh, that would be so fucking kind. She's upset, miss. Forgive the language. Yes, she's just a bit worked up. Goodbye, Mary. Don't worry about me. This is God's way. Her God is not mine. I'm praying you'll soon be free. Took out prison visiting in the 30s. Could never find anything to do on a Saturday night anyway. Agnes is a retired history teacher, an old campaigner with an ear to the ground. Your young friend was prescribed antidepressants, hoarded them, then took them all. Have another slice, dear, do. It was touch and go for a while, but I am reliably informed he has recovered. Though not sufficiently to stand trial, I'd say the poor young man. No, no. Agnes's outrage is a cool breeze in overheated Tinsley House. The good news, the treatment of the nine, has brought about a Free the Cancer of Nine campaign. 
the bad news. This government are looking to introduce an asylum and immigration bill to make things even harder for you, dear. One of the crucial problems, as I see it, Mr. Pennington has a new hairdo, very short. He looks like a Caesar in a blue suit. Is that I can't decide if you're a port applicant. The Special Appeal Tribunal turned down my application for asylum. To be fair, the area with you is genuinely grey. He also has a new smile. Let's face it, it would have been so much better if you'd have arrived half dead. And a new friend, Jemima. She is younger than him, articled, and drives the Porsche. Lack of positive identification of the political faction of the killers also doesn't help. I feel like crying. But what's the point of crying? Better to stay cheerful, hope, and wait. I think if I was to cry, some of the tears would be for the fat English lady in the pretty hat who weeded his garden. Anyway, my dear, it doesn't end here. Not yet. My case goes forward to judicial review. A bit of news that may or may not amuse. Mike O'Brien, immigration officer for this government, has awarded Group 4 a special Investors in People award. I was not called as a defence witness in the case against the Campsford Nine. There was no need. Despite fervent support from the new Labour government and a phone call to local police from Mr Jack Straw urging them to press charges, the court case collapsed in 17 days. The judge directed the jury of eight white men and four women to give a verdict of not guilty, which it did with relish. My friend, the child man, tried to kill himself twice more. Now, is that a fuse or just a bulb? I smell feet. A bulb. Wait here. A moonbeam lights a small bed made up with clean sheets and a blanket. A folded up table. A glass fronted cupboard. A large sagging armchair, a gas fire, four weeping walls, and a window. You all right? Don't worry about the broken pane. It solves one problem. <laughs> the gas fires are lethal in these old properties. At least I won't be concerned about you gassing yourself. I have at last been granted temporary admission. If I break conditions, I can be deported at any time. Oh dear, it does look grim. This is Clarissa Merchant's mother's house, Agnes's friend. All the rooms are empty. She can't sell it because of Mr. Doherty on the ground floor. But I've stayed in this room myself over the years, when it's been too late to get back after the offer. I was only granted temporary admission because I had an address to go to. I cannot change address without permission. I must report weekly to the police station and the Department of Social Security to receive my £30 food voucher. Of course, I cannot work. My dear, you must be kind enough to let me help. I have money, Agnes. Yes, still, I'm sure. Please, I have enough. £252 left. Oh, and you'll need to show them these. Keys, like bells. The old fellow downstairs is harmless. But keep your door locked just the same. And now I really must. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I walk everywhere. Trafalgar Square, Shoreditch, Pudding Lane, Bloomsbury, London Bridge, sitting in a cafe in Convent Garden, which isn't a garden. I watch the carnival. A clown on stilts juggles a plate on a stick, threatening to goo the gathering crowd. A statue suddenly tickles the tot's tongue. A boy with green hair offers me a leaflet, asking, where's God? And there's the jungle of knives and cups. At home, as long as they are remembered, we set a place, serve food and drink to dead loved ones. I take five slow sips of the milky froth. For mother. Mother. Abu. Yemi. Could you pass the pepper, please? She used to dip her nipples in honey, then porridge oats, and made me lick my breakfast off. <laughs> Poor Poppy was sick every Monday for the whole first term, so Caroline sent her to the lower school shrink. The clown juggles wine bottles, I juggle figures. With 250 pounds left and six months before I can work, apart from food vouchers, I must live on 10 pounds a week. Today already I have spent seven pounds and fifty-five pence. I leave taking packets of sugar, the teaspoon, three napkins. As a young man and woman leave, I pocket the leftover egg and press roll. At night, to save heat and light, I burrow fully clothed into blankety blackness. My warm breath makes the damp bed steam. Who is it? I'm Mr. Doherty. I live downstairs. Can I come in? Doesn't the light work? Yes. I'm sorry, dear. I didn't think. No. Please. I brought you this. Homemade vegetable soup steaming in fragrant curly wisps. Brass monkeys in here, dear. I eat the soup downstairs in Mr. Doherty's red hot kitchen, and he tells me of his 40 year struggle against British imperialism. And we watch together on his black and white TV a wildlife program on seals. Number 42, please! I am number 119. A barefoot man has given himself the job of announcing when the numbers click over. Everyone's scared of him. Sometimes the number sticks exactly halfway and he charges at the face behind the glass. It's a boy's face. By his elbow, a bowl of spring flowers are so hot and yellow. They almost burn a hole in the glass. No, sorry. Pardon? You can't have these. I... Behind me, a queue of tuts and sighs. I look at my feet. The floor's uneven. As if hastily tiled, trying to disguise a recent earth tremor. Your vouchers are for food, all right? Comprenez? Things you put in your gob, chew, come out the other end. You can't eat sanitary towels. Well, I suppose you could with a bit of marmite on them. At the police station, one week the roof leaks. They put out buckets and waste paper bins to catch the drips. Everybody laughs and jokes. My name flows from the pen now. I underline with a flourish. Mr. Pennington calls me on the communal phone. It's himself, is it? As I squat on the bottom stair, Mr. Doherty brings me a rug. The mail's reliable. I receive the papers, yes. 
in the background a party. And the date is fine. Well, I'm not sure what it would clash with. I'm managing, thank you. I have 132 pounds and 57 pence left. Through the pop of champagne corks and laughter, I hear, Eddie, darling, darling, look. Freedom. It's wonderful. Night after night, I sit in Mr. Doherty's kitchen. We take turns to cook in time for the six o'clock news. One night, we watch British planes bombard Belgrade. Too much salt in the fish soup, you reckon? There are Kosovans in Council, I'm sure of it. Not for long, I'd say. Dip your bread in. Mop up the last little bit. I'm sorry, dear, I really am. Clarissa Merchant, her mother owns the house. But you have to admit you've had a good innings. After nearly five months, I have been told to leave by Friday. Of course I said they could have the whole house. Well, I am chair of the committee. We've all been so moved by their plight. Who could fail to be? But it's not up to scratch, apparently, the house. Not sanitary or some such nonsense. You'd think after what they've been through. So, it's this room or nothing. My brain starts to fast forward. She's been through hell, poor girl. At least it's a name pretty, isn't it? From Kosovo herself. Being incarcerated in one of those rape centres. Can you imagine? Doesn't know where her family are. Speaks the most charming broken English. Do I have to tell Social Security I've lost my address? Will they send me back inside? Yes. If I tell the police? Your business is on the brink of sorting out, I've heard. I'm sure you've made lots of friends who gladly put you up. Pretty girl, like you. I... Well... Anyway, dear, I've told them. Now, somebody mentioned the press might want a photo. <laughs> oh dear, it is pretty grim up here. A couple of cheap rugs will cheer it up. A duvet and new curtains, perhaps. What's this? I'm sorry, I broke the pane opening the window. Well, you'll pay for it. Pay? Yes, I mean, I'll let you stay rent free. I'm damned if I'll pay for your breakages. Right. 20 pounds will do. 20. I owe a tenner then. I have 55 pounds and 90 pence left. Oh, you'll wash the sheets before you go. What's the matter, dear? Have I offended you at all? No, I'm, I'm not feeling well. Well, let me and perhaps I can help. No, really, I, I need to be alone. I have a rhubarb crumble I baked last night. Come down, dear, warm yourself. Really, I... Please, just leave me alone. Getting to a test, was I? I'm sorry. People think when you're old, you don't have those feelings, but you do. Ridiculous. You're a beautiful young woman, a princess. And I'm some broken down old fool. I'd never have laid a finger on you. Never. Friday morning before he wakes, I slip a note under his door. It reads, thank you for your friendship. You're not waiting for a bus, are you? Friday evening, 10 to 10. How oh, on earth? I've been carefully watching you. Every single bus has been and gone, and you're still here. Very clever. Your old man kicked you out, did he? That's right, but he'll get over it, of course, in the morning. Of course, but meanwhile, you can't come home with me. No? 
My mum doesn't allow me bringing girls back. I have to do it up the alley, back of the Lord Brett. Really? But I know somewhere you could go. Well? A large woman with burns to her lips, chin and neck shows me the room. How much? 50 quid a night. I'm sorry, I can't afford that. Oh, all right, 30. But don't tell my husband, he'll murder me. I'm afraid he's still too. 20 then, because you're a friend of Stan's. 20. All right, 20. The room is 12 foot by 6. The electric light on the push switch only stays on for 15 seconds. The foot of the sink is broken, the tap drips. As I climb into bed, the rubber undersheet stiffen with urine, crackles. In the darkness, I hear the burnt woman scream. Then, a key turns in the lock. Don't be scared, I won't really hurt you. You're pretty. Get out! Don't shout, you hurt my ears. Get out! Get out! Get out! There's no spaces tonight again. I'm sorry. You promised. You said next week, come back. Please try again tomorrow. I thought you encouraged a weekly turnover, give people a chance to get off the streets. We do, but there's been an outbreak of flu. It's making things very difficult. Look, we've let three or four stay in today. We're a night shelter. Everyone's supposed to be out by 9 a.m. If the council get wind of it, they'll close us down. I'm an educated man. Please try again tomorrow. In my country, I'm a civil engineer. Yesterday, I slept in the park. My coat's covered in dog shit. The smell makes me sick. You go to the day center? Yes. I politely ask the fellow if it's finished with the times. Was that causing trouble? You get soup then? Soup! Ha! Cat's be soup! I was talking to the young lady. Yes, I get soup. You're still getting your vouchers? Yes, I I'm getting my vouchers. I heard it on the wireless yesterday. For the customers, the voucher system won't apply. You're on temporary admission. Yes, I'm on temporary admission. Why give them money and not me? I lost a brother fighting for democracy. If you want to stay out, don't let the police know you've lost your address. Oi, wakey, wakey. This is a bus, not a big mobile dos house. Where's the ticket? Well, you've overridden by 17 stops. I am therefore obliged to implement the five pound penalty fare on passengers found to be traveling whilst not in possession of a valid ticket. I don't, um, I haven't, um, you haven't looked. I don't. I haven't. Right. Name and address. Where you been? What you done to your leg? Where's your bag? Don't cry, black girl. You can have my bag. My family. Photos of my family. Abu. Little sister Abu. The shawl. And the little shawl. All I. Look what I got. You said you'd get me Lucas in with your special vouchers, you said. Please. I must make a phone call. The phone number's in my bag. Agnes is 01242. No. 0122. Please, God. Let Agnes be there. Please, God. Please, God. My 
gods. The bird women. The living dead swoop and flutter, their great wings smashing against the glass. Yes? Oh, could I speak to Mr. Pennington, please? I'm afraid he's away. Away? Yes, he's on his honeymoon in the Caribbean. Who's this? I can contact him if it's important. Hello? Hello, are you still there? You think hunger would bite the belly, not the brain? The bird gods are vultures. They're everywhere. In the bins back of the Burger King. On the park bench in the half cute packet of tricks. They're mischievous too. In the bottle of pop in the telephone box that turns out to be piss. You could beg. I can't beg. You have to have nice clothes to beg. And a dog. You have to be able to write. You could beg because you've got lovely clothes and sad eyes. How can you bear to go on living? You stupid, wasted, crazy woman! Twenty pounds. Make it ten pounds, and I'll be quick. You've got nice tits, and with a condom, right? One of those extra strong jobbies. I've got a wife and kids. Nice. I like a bit of rump and black meat. Tough, but tasty. Oh. Christ! You've a bony ass. No, no, it, it's no good. It's like fucking a corpse. Six one two Agnes Holroyd speaking. Hello. Hello, who's there? Hello, who's this? Hello. Well, it seems to me there's more holes in the young woman's story than in a doily. There's absolutely no evidence put before me to suggest her life is at risk. In fact, in the ever-changing political climate, she might even be greeted a heroine. It is highly unlikely that she would have been granted leave to remain. Now, it's a straightforward case of absconding whilst on temporary admission. We shall put a search order out for your client and recommend immediate return to country of origin. Did you hear me, Mr. Pennington? Did you hear me? Yes. Yes. I hear. I don't know. A week? A month? A year? Somebody comes and leaves tuna mayo sandwiches. Rain. I drink rain. What's that? That's a police van, is it? Yes. All right. Not really. You'd have to help 
My legs don't work too well. Thanks. I'm sorry I smell. Yes. Yes. Be careful. I'm bleeding. The young woman was held in a strip cell in Holloway Prison for six and a half weeks. I am a poet. Why do you smile? Words are hot wax. And this poem play is a candle I light for Anneli. Then she was deported for my daughter, for my daughter, freedom. She was met at the airport in her own country by her loyal friends, who, because of her changed appearance at first, did not recognize her. Am I still me? She was not arrested at the airport and her re-entry into the country provoked no comment in the papers. She was hidden successfully, moving from safe house to safe house. On March the 4th, 2001, a group of three young men in part military uniform burst into the apartment where she and her three friends were drinking morning coffee. They were all killed outright. 